guys, it's Adrian over BHA here. All right, so here is the video that I have been talking so much about. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, the way it works is uh, you are going to get a an alert on your phone, either through Telegram or uh, iOS push notification, because that's the two that we worked with recently, um, that will pop up and tell you if rain is nearby and even show you that weather radar that we uh, did not so long ago. I'm not the one that came up with it, so I'll put in there a link to uh, where you can find more information about it, and uh, Brent did a really good job of putting this together. I thought it was pretty cool. I tweaked it just a little bit uh, for this tutorial, not much. Um, so let's get started. All right, so there are four videos that, that I've done recently that, that I've kind of pulled together and taken parts from uh, to create this video. We are going to use a sensor from the uh, dark sky weather component, um, uh, specifically the nearest storm distance component, as you can see here. We are, of course, also going to use the weather underground radar um, image or GIF that we uh, created a few weeks back as well. So we'll need the link from that, uh, as you can see here. We're also going to use uh, the, of course, iOS push notification. So uh, some of the the uh, stuff we learned from that tutorial, as well as uh, the Telegram notification uh, component that we uh, worked with as well. Uh, I, I'm basically going to set up a script to uh, send send this alert to iOS push notification. I'm also going to set up a second script to send it to Telegram. You don't have to do it this way. You can basically put the body of what you're trying to do inside the automation. I like to do the script basically because uh, during this tutorial, uh, I'll be able to test it and show you what that notification is going to look like uh, just by executing that script. So we're just going to create a couple of them. I'm going to call this one rain radar underscore push. You can call it whatever you want, obviously. <clears throat> All right, so the alias will be rain radar dash push. The service for this will be the um, iOS notification. All right, so for the message, I'm going to say it might rain soon, and then I'm actually going to pull in one of the uh, sensors, the one that we're using from Dark Sky. So we're going to say there is a storm reported, and then this is how you actually uh, get the data from that uh, sensor. So we're going to say um, states, and then in parentheses, you have sensor dark sky. And I'll put all this information in the um, description below so you can just kind of copy and paste it. But when you do it like this, it will actually just pull in the number uh, uh, or that's on that uh, sensor. And then we're going to attach a photo because we want to attach that animated GIF from the weather radar. So attachment. And then this will be the URL that we used for that weather radar. So I'm just going to copy and paste mine in there.
and then the content dash type we're gonna make that a uh, gif all right so that's the end of the iOS script that we we're gonna do we're gonna do a second one uh, similar to that one that we'll use for telegram so I'm gonna call this one rain underscore radar underscore telegram Alias will kind of be the same thing, rain radar dash telegram. All right, now the service for this is a little bit different. Notice an issue on the telegram tutorial that I did earlier where it sent the photo, but it did not send the message along with the photo. And I didn't catch that before I did the, the tutorial, and I'm sorry about that. Um, so here, the only way that I've figured out how you can actually send an image with the uh, with the actual message in there is you kind of have to instead of using the notify component we're actually going to use the telegram underscore bot component so it'll be telegram underscore bot dot send underscore document and the reason we do send underscore document instead of send underscore photo is that because it's a gif you can't send it using send underscore photo URL I'm just going to copy that URL that we used earlier, paste that in there. And instead of having a message like we did uh, previously, we're going to do basically a caption, which will be a caption for this photo. And we're going to say the same thing on it as well. So we're just going to copy that from the message above and I'm going to paste that in the caption. And that is pretty much the end of this part of the tutorial. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save this. And now we are ready to create the automation that we are going to use to send out these uh, notifications. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my automation file, automation.yaml. And again, I'll have all this in the description so you can uh, copy and paste it and do whatever. Alias is going to be rain radar alert. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I uh, always set the initial state to on. That basically just means if we rebooted uh, Home Assistant, it guarantees that the uh, this automation will be on by default. Uh, trigger for this tutorial and uh, the way I'm setting it up I'm gonna do set the trigger to be the numeric state of that sensor um, that dark sky sensor so we're gonna say platform numeric underscore state the entity ID will be uh, sensor dot dark underscore sky underscore nearest underscore storm underscore distance yeah it's kind of a long one And then I just, uh, basically the way I have it set up is I want it to trigger when that distance is less than five miles away. And I'm going to add some conditions in there. You don't have to do that. Again, this is just one way you can do it. So um, my conditions are going to be, I only want to be notified if I'm out of the house. So if I am or my wife are out of the house, we I want to get alert. Um, otherwise, if I'm at home, you know, I can check the weather at the house, whatever. I don't need, I don't need to be uh, notified while I'm sitting around in the house. So I'm going to add some uh, or conditions in here. Condition is going to be state. Entity ID is going to be my device tracker for my uh, iPhone. So. The state will be, of course, not home. 
The cool thing about this automation is that um, you can also do other things with it as well, like um, go ahead and close your garage door if it was open or anything because you don't want anything to get wet inside your garage. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with it, uh, assuming that you have the available uh, home automation hardware. Got my wife's phone in here. Same thing, make the state be not underscore home. All right, now we're gonna do the action. Now for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and add both the scripts into this automation. Obviously, if you're setting this up, you're probably only doing one or the other. You're either gonna be one of gonna be notified by Telegram or iOS push notifications. But um, for the sake for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to just go ahead and add both just to show you. So of course the data will be the script name. So we're gonna say script dot rain underscore radar underscore push. And then we're gonna add in a second service calling the other script. Uh, the entity ID for this one, of course, is uh, script.rain underscore radar underscore telegram. We are ready to save that. And now we are ready to uh, go ahead and restart Home Assistant for all of our changes to take effect. We're going to give that... Uh, a few seconds to come back up. Once that comes back up, let's uh, take a look at what those might look like. So for this tutorial, obviously I'm not, uh, the automation is not going to trigger enough to show you what those alerts are going to look like uh, by the automation, but because we created scripts, we can kick off those scripts and at least give you an idea of what those uh, notifications are going to look like. You'll be able to see, I like the iOS push notification. It comes out really good. I really don't like the Telegram notification, and I'm fixing to show you why. Uh, it's just not, uh, not as clean and clear-cut as the iOS notification is. I got the web front end on the left, my phone on the right. Let's go ahead and do the uh, rain radar push script that we created and see what that notification looks like. Kick that off. All right, there is the notification. As you can see, it's 67 miles away, so that's obviously not going to trigger on my automation. But it pops up. You got the uh, animated GIF in there with the message underneath, so it looks really cool. And, of course, if there was a lot of rain or something on the radar, you'd be able to see that. Uh, so, again, I really like this notification. I like the way it looks. Um, but let's go ahead and see what that telegram notification is going to look like. So we'll swap out instead of the iPhone, we'll put the Android up there. And let's hit the rain radar uh, telegram script. There it is. We'll give it a second to come up. Okay, there it is at the top. Click into telegram here. So as you can see, by default, it doesn't even show the image. It shows the message, same as before. You know, there was rain 67 miles away. You have to actually hit that link, wait for it to download the image, and then it opens it up in a little viewer. So, of course, you still get everything from the, uh, from the notification, just not as clean as the iOS notification where it's all in one. Nonetheless, that is the end of this uh, tutorial. I mean, like I said, I hope you guys uh, liked it. I, I kind of hyped it up a little bit. I thought it was really cool. I really like the push notification. Um, I like the fact that you can um, do all kinds of other stuff uh, with it. You know, like if rain's coming this way, you can uh, close, your, uh, close your garage door if you have that automated or something with your windows or... All kinds of different options that you have there. 
Uh, also, you could probably, and what we may do in a follow-up tutorial is I may look at doing an actionable notification uh, where you can basically, uh, if I, you get an alert where rain is nearby, we can actually maybe suppress any further alerts. Because the way I have that set up right now is that basically every time that that sensor updates, if it's below five miles uh, distance or whatever, it's going to send out another alert. So it could be kind of annoying. So um, I didn't do actionable notifications on this just because I hadn't gone over that in any kind of tutorial yet. So I didn't want to throw that in here just yet. But uh, stay tuned. I'll try to put something together for actionable notifications where you can, uh, you know, turn off lights or, uh, again, you know, turn off the automation if uh, you want to suppress it or whatever. A few different options that we could do with that as well. I hope you liked the tutorial. Um, if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you got questions, certainly hit me up in the comments below. Um, uh, if there are any videos that you want to see that I don't already have out there, again, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I've got a few added to my list that people have been requesting, so uh, feel free to let me know if there's anything you want to see. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.